at the end of a year take a week to review, ponder and reflect on everything that has happened in your life. That is a quote from Jim Rohn and I think indeed the end of the year is the perfect time to reflect on the past year, to see what went well and where's maybe room for improvement. It doesn't have to be a whole week, I think we're gonna be much faster than that. And you can do this for your whole life, but in this particular video we're gonna look at how you can reflect on your financial journey. And we'll start with what's in it for you if you do this end of year financial reflection. And we're also gonna talk about how a reflection like this could look like. And I will start with the weather lean method that doesn't take a whole week, not even a whole day. But if you want to, in the end, I will go through some in-depth questions for the financial reflection. So why are we doing this? A financial reflection allows us to follow up on our goals. So it is one thing to set goals for yourself and maybe you did in the beginning of the past year, but it's another thing to actually work towards and achieve those goals. So maybe at the beginning of this year you wanted to save up $10,000 and you started and you were motivated and you got to like $2,000, but then you know life got in the way and other things became more important and you just stopped. So this reflection allows you to see what happened to your goals. It also allows you to see what you already achieved and I think this is a very important one because maybe you even reached some of your goals but you like didn't notice it or forgot about them because something else occupied your mind more. And the brain actually tends to only see the negative things. That's kind of a survival mode thing. So putting your achievements in the center of your attention might even surprise you in a positive way. And it will also motivate you to keep going. But on the other hand, a financial reflection also allows us to see our blind spots. So the things we can work on more and maybe you've gone through some challenges this year. And reflecting about those challenges can help you adjust your goals. Me, for example, at the beginning of the year, I set myself a goal to reach a certain milestone in net worth. But then I reduced my working hours to be able to work on this YouTube channel more. But with a lower salary, I wasn't able to keep up my savings rate and invest as much as I would have needed to hit the goal. I will not beat myself up about this because another goal I had was to create another income stream. Now, I'm not there yet, but I hope that at some point I will be able to make some money off this YouTube channel and by at the same time helping you build wealth and watch this videos for free, except for the few seconds of time in the beginning for the ads. So this other goal of creating another income stream is actually more important to me than hitting that other goal this year. And that is one type of blind spot that can occur if goals like cancel each other out. Other blind spots, for example, could be patterns in behavior because it also could have been that I was spending too much and saving too little and therefore not being able to hit the goal. Or for you, maybe it's to keep on procrastinating on investing. So this financial reflection can just give us a lot of data points and it also can lead to prevent repeating mistakes. Now, if you look back at the past year and you discover things that didn't go so well, that's actually a good thing because now you can prevent them from happening. If you spend 40% of your income on takeout and going out to restaurants and this is keeping you from saving anything, then you need to notice it first before you can change. And then those little changes allow us to move in the right direction. A reflection on your finances is also a form of accountability because you're intentionally checking in on your financial situation. It also shows that you take responsibility for your finances, which is very good. And it really is the only way to achieve financial success. And lastly, it sets the stage for new intentions because with all this new gained knowledge from the reflection, you can set appropriate goals and intentions for the next year. So now let's take a look at how we're actually going to do this. There are different ways to reflect. You can do it in a journal. That's the way I do it. As a matter of fact, I reflect every day and I also have a weekly review and a monthly review and then the yearly review and all of them I write into this journal. If that's too much to you, I totally understand. Now, I don't reflect just on my finances, but on everything that happens in my life. If you just want to do this once a year or twice a year, uh, you can still write it down maybe in a smaller one. But of course, if you just want to do it once a year or maybe twice or four times a year, that's also totally fine. And of course, you can also do it digitally. So just open your favorite note-taking software on your laptop, like, I don't know, Apple Notes, Drafts, Microsoft Word, Google Sheet, anything with a blank page will be suffice. And also before we start going through the questions, throughout this whole process I want you to stay positive and constructive. So keep a curious mind instead of a judging one. Because the goal here is not to beat yourself up at the end of the year, but to objectively assess your financial situation so you can move forward. So try to see everything with a little like emotional distance. You can even try to see yourself as a researcher, so one who's just looking at the data, or maybe as an adventurer and you're going on a treasury hunt. And the first question I want you to ask yourself is what happened this year? So we'll start with a neutral point of view and I simply want you to go through all the major events 
that happened this year. And at this point, it doesn't just have to be about finances, it can be about everything, unless you want to. So maybe you moved, maybe you were promoted and you got a raise, maybe you had wonderful holidays with your friends or your family. Write all of them down because it sets the mood and it might also help you to remember what comes next. In case you have trouble to come up with anything, you can go through month by month. So what happened in January and February and so on. For example, I personally finished my doctoral thesis in February this year, so you can officially call me Dr. Sophia now. Alternatively, you can go through different areas of your life, like health, physical and mental, relationships, family, friends and partner, and work, career and money. And once you've done that, the next question is what went well financially this year? If it's already on the list from the major event, you can just repeat it here. And if many things immediately pop into your head, the better. Write them all down. Examples can be you hit a savings goal, you got a raise, you paid off debt, you got a tax return, you increased your net worth, you took care of your insurances, anything that's related to money really. If it's difficult for you to think of anything, even very small things count. So maybe you opened a high interest savings account or you bought your first chair, you read a book about personal finance or watched YouTube videos about personal finance which you've never done before. Maybe you gave money to charity. Those steps are all part of your financial journey. So nothing is too small to write down here. And to make it easier, you can also go through the different categories of personal finance. That is income, spending, saving, investing and debt. After you finish this, the next question is what didn't go well financially this year? And this might be the hardest part of the whole exercise, but it can also be the most valuable one. I will tell you why in a minute. So here just write down everything that didn't go well. Maybe you got laid off of your job. Maybe you got sick and you couldn't work anymore and that really was a problem. Maybe you increased your debt or you put money out of your savings, put money out of your investments, had investments that didn't go so well or you overspent. And here's the thing, none of us likes to see what went badly. It can be hard, it can be frustrating, it can even be painful. So why did I say this might be the most valuable? In psychology, there are really only two reasons why we as a human take action, any kind of action, and that is to feel pleasure. So we want to make good experiences that give us fulfillment and we want to maximize positive emotions. And the other one is to avoid pain. We don't want negative emotions, we don't want discomfort and we don't want pain. Now that is the reason why this might be the hardest part of the reflection process, but at the same time it is the one that will really lead to change. Because you will not want to feel that way in one year from now. If you take each single thing of that list of things that didn't go well, the best thing you can do is to allow yourself to feel it. So don't deny it as in, oh that's not so bad after all, or other people do that too. But instead be honest about it and maybe even make it more intense. Because that is what's going to drive you to action and really change something about your behavior. After this difficult but yet effective practice, we can continue with other questions. That is, what were my goals last year and what happened to them? If you didn't have any, you can start after this practice to set yourself some goals for the next year. If you had goals and you achieved them, then brilliant, you celebrate. And if you didn't achieve those goals, ask yourself why. What was the obstacle in me achieving this goal? And also, how can I overcome this obstacle? This could look like, oh, I didn't hit my savings goal this year. And the reason is that I forgot to put something aside in the last four months. How to overcome this? You could automate the transfer so that you don't have to think about it. Another question is, what were my biggest mistakes this year? And what can I learn from them? Now, your mistakes are probably hidden within the list of things that didn't go well. And it does make sense to really formulate them as a mistake and list them here again. Because by formulating them, you are becoming more aware of them. And it will also make it easier next year to see if you made the same mistake or if you managed to avoid it. By the way, I condensed all the questions I talk about here into an end of year money reflection blueprint. If you're interested, there's a link down in the video description. And a final question for our lean financial review is how would I rate my financial well-being on a scale from one to 10? I put this one last because now you are aware of everything that happened in the past year, the good and the bad. So it's not just about a gut feeling, it's really backed by data. And it's also a good way to see your progress over the next few years. Now, all of this can already be enough for an end of year reflection for your finances. If you want, you can stay and we'll dive even deeper into the topic. So for a more in-depth analysis, we can go through specific areas of personal finance. And we will start with spending. Was my spending this year aligned with my financial priorities? So did you really spend your money on things that matter to you? Or was it more of an unconscious, oh, I don't even know where the money went kind of spending? Are there 
there areas where I can cut back next year? If yes, how can you best achieve this? And the more you go into detail here, the better. So for example, oh, I spent a lot on eating out this year and it was especially at these three restaurants. So for next year, then you can set the intention of, okay, I only want to go out like once a week. And then I will try to concentrate on the restaurants that I also enjoy very much, but that are not as expensive as those three. If you don't know where you could cut back, that would be the perfect time to look at some of your biggest bills. But it can also be that you're absolutely sure that you optimized your spending. And that then is the perfect transition to the next category, which is income. Here you can ask yourself, did my income increase? If no, would I like to increase it? If yes, how did I increase it? Can I repeat or double down on that? So maybe you got a raise because you did something specifically good at your job. What was it? Maybe you got some dividend income from stocks or a fund. Can you buy more? Also, how happy am I with my income and how happy am I with my career? Are there any things that I would like to change? And if yes, how can I change them? And also a question, how many income streams do I have? Can I create more? I personally think all of us should have at least two to three income streams and that is your job and your investments. And from your investments, for example, you can have interest income from savings accounts and you can have dividends or capital gains from the stock market. The third category is saving. So how much of my income did I save in total this year? If you end up at 5%, I would say that's too low. A 10% would be okay to good. 20% would be very good. More than 20% would already be excellent. Excellent. If it's 50% or more, you're gonna be wealthy fast. And you can ask, how does my savings structure look like at the moment? Now by saving structure, I mean things like, do you pay yourself first? So right up front when you receive your salary or do you do it later on? Do you have an automatic transfer or do you do it manually and maybe have forgotten about it once in a while? Do you have a system of saving from everything extra that comes in like a tax return or a raise? If you're interested in my personal savings system, I talk about it in detail in another video. Video. And you can also ask yourself, how can I save more? And the how here from a language perspective is very important because it activates your creativity. Because simply to ask yourself, can I save more? <laughs> might also lead to the answer, no, I can't. But with the how, you can implement a reliable system. You can cut down costs, you can increase your income. You might even be surprised on what this can activate. The fourth category is about investments. And here you can ask, do I already have investments? If no, how can I start? If yes, how did they perform? Am I invested in the way I wanted to? Do the numbers reflect my asset allocation? If you don't know what all of those terms mean, I will link my beginner's guide to investing. And if the numbers don't reflect the initial plan, then how can I adjust? Also, can I optimize my investment strategy? This can be for performance, but also for risk. Did you maybe have a hard time seeing the numbers go down from the market and you were tempted to panic sell, then maybe it's time to increase the risk-free part of your portfolio. Or have you been totally relaxed about it, knowing that it will go up again? Then maybe you can increase the risky part. By the way, now that you're doing all the work for your reflection, the end of the year is also the perfect time for rebalancing in your portfolio. Category five is debt. So do I still have any kind of debt? If yes, what kind of debt is it? And do I have a plan in motion to pay it off? And also did I make progress in reducing the debt? And maybe even what is my credit score and how can I improve it? And the sixth category is charity. So did I give any money to charity this year? If yes, was it aligned with my values? And if now, do I maybe want to use the remaining few days to do that? So now you do have the full picture of everything that happened financially in the past 12 months. But in order to make the next year even more successful financially, you need to set goals for yourself and how you can do it in the most effective way so that you actually achieve them, I explain in this video. Thank you for spending your precious time with me. I hope you got some inspiration and value out of this and I hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye.